everyone, thanks for tuning in. I've been asked by the school just to provide a career update since I left CHS and hopefully it'll help you guys out, um, those looking to work um, in, in my field, which is, is as, as a veterinary surgeon. So I left CHS in 2009 and I went to do a five-year course at Glasgow University to study veterinary medicine. I then graduated in 2014 and have been working as a vet since, so worked in general practice I've worked with a mixture of farm animals, um, horses, and now solely small animals. Um, so I'm currently one of three vets that work in small animal practice in Cheshire. Um, it's quite a routine practice, so appointments get booked in um, previous days or day before, or, or on the day if there are more emergencies. Um, and then we share these amongst ourselves, so these are, are consultations with the animal and with the owner. Um, or, or surgery appointments that come in um, in the morning. So it's quite a lot of variation on what we do. Um, it's a bit like being a GP um, doctor in a vet veterinary surgeon, uh, veterinary surgery. So I think from your point of view, there's a lot of opportunity out there for younger people. So since graduating, I've not really experienced a shortage of jobs. There's always been a plentiful amount, whether you wanted to work in, as I do now, solely small animal or in mixed jobs or as a farm and equine um, vet. Um, I think it's always going to be a career that's that's sought after. Um, and whether you wanted to head into veterinary nursing or as a veterinary surgeon, again, I think I think there's a plentiful amount of jobs, jobs out there. You can go more specialist um, as well, do certificates following a few years out in the field or... Um, or specialise in a particular species um, and go down that kind of route. There's also um, less kind of um, well spoke about is, is more government roles as a veterinary surgeon. So whether this is in meat hygiene or as a TB tester or even working in a lab as a pathologist, there are other um, jobs out there where you need to still be a vet. Um, but, but other than just general practice, that is what most people really think about. So I think the um, veterinary profession has changed quite a bit over the years. There's, like I was saying, a lot more specialism now. So rather than going into mixed practice where you deal with every kind of animal, which I did only a year ago, so those jobs are still out there. There's more of a focus to, to go into solely one species, whether this is broadly small animal or um, into equine or into farm practice it's, it is becoming more of a specialist niche industry um, there's also been a big change with the corporatization of veterinary practices so this is where big financial companies buy vet practices which have been originally opened by vets and run by vets um, and, and they start the running of the practice um, as opposed to the vets running them this has its advantages and disadvantages. Um, as a veterinary assistant, like I am, um, not not one of the directors or the partners, this probably affects me less. Um, but they certainly make rules about uh, what drugs and medicines that we can use and buy into the practice, um, and and have more of a say of of the money coming into the practice. So, um, yes, obviously, primarily our our role is to care for animals and provide the best treatment, um, which which never goes away. It, it is a business at the end of the day. Um, in order to pay for new equipment, pay for medicines, pay for people's uh, salaries to work there, um, money does need to be coming through the door. So I think really skills for becoming a vet. Whenever you um, or whenever I say, you know, I'm a veterinary surgeon, I think the first thing that comes to people's minds is, oh gosh, you must be really clever. You must have got good grades at um, a level and must have done well at school which is is true you obviously can't get into vet school without the adequate grades um, and without having done the right subjects um, but I also think it's really important to be very practical and hands-on it's a very practical job um, and I think it's very useful to know from the start that this is definitely the career that you want to go down so for me I did a lot of work experience prior to actually getting into vet school and I really think it helped my application and it's one of the reasons why I got in. You're up against you know thousands of other students that have got the same grades as you otherwise you wouldn't be applying. So to show you've got a keen interest there and, and a varied interest I think is really important. So for example I went to do a lot of milking on, on dairy farms, I went lambing for um, pretty much every Easter 
um, while I was at school for two or three weeks. I worked at riding stables every weekend, um, just learning how to muck horses out, tack them up, um, lead them around the arena for people riding them. I worked at a cattery in kennels um, and I had the opportunity to, as well to go to Manchester University to, to do a days there, to work in their lab. So I think that, you know, when I could write all of that in my personal statement and, and say, um, say all about my experiences. And then it was something I could bring up at the interview stage as well, which was um, then a good talking point. Um, if you go down that line and, and you think, gosh, this is really not for me, then, you know, at least it's, it is still being very worthwhile. Um, if you can get work experience in vet practices, which I know is becoming harder with kind of insurance, um, that kind of thing. But if you can go through your school and get work mm-hmm. experience again, I'd say that that's really key. If if not, I wouldn't worry too much. If you can speak to somebody that, that is a vet or, or ring a practice up and say, look, can someone give me a call back? I've just got some questions I want to ask, you know, have them written down and then and then have a chat with them really about about the job and and whether it's a career that you want to still still pursue. So really my advice um for anyone looking to become a vet um it's very much not a nine to five job. Animals get sick at any point in the day. Um so we provide out of hours care. This is weekend work, this is um evening and overnight care as well. So it's it's not really like a doctor where you would work a 12 hour shift and then you'd, you'd be off um, and then you'd come in the following day having had a good night's sleep and, and work another 12 hour shift. You, you work a normal working week generally and then you do your on call on top of that. So it can be quite tiring, certainly if you've had two or three calls in the middle of the night, which is, is not rare. Um, so you, you kind of have to be able to, to deal with that and deal with being being a bit tired. Um, I think you need to be quite thick skinned as well. Um, as much as we're seeing nice animals on a, on a daily basis, um, we do we do deal with a lot of death as well. So there's, you know, there's animals that they don't go the right way um, and we can't treat everything um, and make everything better. Um, and you know, that's euthanasia for farm animals, of horses, um, and small animals, dogs and cats. And obviously for the owners, this is really upsetting. And from our point of view, it's obviously upsetting as well to, to see them or having worked up a case um, for days or weeks. And, and unfortunately, you know, it's lost its battle. So I think being able to deal with that um, as well is really important. There's a lot of demands now, I would say, from clients, from owners. There's a lot of things that they can find on the internet of um, treatment plans, diagnoses that they think their pet pet has. And one of the most important parts, while yes, you're, um, you are a vet, you're dealing with animals on a daily basis, you've also got to deal with the clients on a daily basis and being able to communicate to them what you think the problem with, is with their animal, how you're going to help them, what you're doing to find out what's wrong with them. Being able to communicate those things correctly um, and in the way that they understand is is really important because if you lose that that communication line line with them, um, you know you've lost half the battle. Then I think as well you need to accept that you don't um, you won't know everything all of the time. So by and large, um, you know vets have done well at school, they've done well in their A levels, they've done well through university to get where they are. We are quite perfectionist type. Um, stereotype people I would say Um, and you know you're not going to know all of the medicine all of the time and what's going on with with each and every animal uh, that comes through the door so being able to recognize that ask for help um, when it's needed um, is really important and don't put too much pressure on yourself to think I need to know I need to know all this now why don't I know this Um, it is frustrating I think with the help and guidance of others then um, you'll continue to grow grow as a vet so I think really I just wanted to end with with why did I pick um, and choose to go into the career as a as a vet um, and what do I kind of enjoy about it. So I really like the scope of the work that we do. It's so varied. Like I said, you can work with with dogs, cats, small animals, um, horses, farm animals. You can go into kind of a government role um, or, or pathology. Um, and I love being able to combine science, which I loved at school, with medicine and with being able to to help animals 
um, on a daily basis. So as well as this, um, I think it's it's almost encompasses a number of jobs in one. So you know you you are a surgeon, you, you perform surgery, you consult with clients. Um, we do we do dentistry. We do a lot of work with fertility, with cattle. Um, all of those kind of things it encompasses so many more than than just the one job. Um, I also like the fact it's it's very hands on. So I had to work very hard at school to get the grades at A level. Um, and work hard throughout university as well to get and pass through the course. Um, but something that comes more naturally to me is, is practical skills and the job. You know, you're not sat at a desk all day. Um, you are doing surgery. You are working um, a lot, a lot of hands-on um, and very practical job. So, so this really lends it lends itself to just such a fulfilling um, career. I also liked on the farm and equine side the fact that you could drive around um, in between calls. Um, we were an ambulatory practice, which means that we provide care out to farm and um, horse animals uh, out on the yard or out on the farm. So yes, you're driving around the countryside, um, gave you a break as well between jobs and, and just able to see other places. Um, alongside the farm work, um, I really enjoy the fact it's it's helping farmers, it's helping the farming industry and, and to feed the population at the end of the day. Um, it's it's really fulfilling. So I hope this talk um, has been helpful and um, that you've gained something from it. And if anyone has any questions um, that they want to ask or needs any more information, uh, don't hesitate to contact me. I'll leave my contact details with the school. Um, and, and yes, hopefully it's provided you a useful insight into life as a vet and, and it helps you on your way into that career if, if it's something that you think you want to do. Thanks for listening.